Well, good morning, everyone. How we doing? Anybody else have a little bit of frustration getting to church this morning with the road works? Or with yeah, annoying, wasn't it? Very frustrating. Uh, we came around the back roads because we have to go to McDonald's to get a coffee in the morning. And then Broomgate was all closed off. And the diversions, I think they just wanted to take us around all of Peterborough rather than take us to where we wanted to really go. So a little bit of frustration. Uh, I think it took us about half an hour or so to get in here this morning. But that's okay. That's all right. Have you got your Bibles? Verse of Scripture that I was just thinking about in the prayer meeting this morning. And it's Psalm chapter 8. And it's a verse of Scripture that we know really, really well. Well, I hope we know really, really well. Psalm 8, verse, verse 4, that says this. What is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? What is man that you are mindful of him? I don't know how often you think about it, really, but you're always on the mind of God. Come on, talk to me. I know it's a little bit colder, but you're always on his mind. I mean, there's a song in there, is there? Elvis Presley used to sing, and I'm not going to do an impression of that. Um, but you're always on the mind of God. And uh, the, the New King James Version puts it like this. What is man that you're mindful of him, the son of man that you visit him? Is it okay this morning if God turns up in church? Are you okay with that? Because, exactly, it's his house. And over the last few weeks and months, we've really had a, 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 an impact of God's presence, and especially healing over the last uh, few weeks and things, and uh, we want exactly the same this morning. Amen. Is that all right? So if you've come this morning with pains and aches and whatever else, is it okay if you leave without him? Amen. Well, I've got a better amen. Right. What about this morning you come in and you feel a little bit tired, a little bit weary? Well... Psalm 23 says, you know, he just wants to restore your soul. Everything that we need this morning, we find in him. Is that true? Yes. Come on, stand with me. We're going to pray. We're going to worship. Can I ask you to be a little bit patient with this? We've bought a new sound desk. The other one died a little while ago, so we've bought a state of the art. Is it state of the art? It costs state of the art. And so we bought a digital desk with all this stuff, and also they're still working on it. So be a little bit patient with this, and we'll hopefully we'll get them all worked out. And anyway, it doesn't matter what goes on there, we're just going to worship anyway, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Just be a new Norma. We'll do it your way. Is that right? Come on, lift your hands in the presence of God. Father, we, we love scriptures like this because it, it just tells us, God, that you're always thinking about us. So even right now, even right now, in this place, Father, we're on the mind of God. Yes. Even now, in this place, we're about just to come together to praise you and to worship you, God, we're on your mind. And Father, we're asking this morning, Father, as we lift our hearts, as we lift our hands, as we would bow before you in our worship, as we would leave aside everything that's gone on this week, Father, as we come to worship you this morning in spirit and in truth, God, we're asking for a visitation of the Holy Spirit in this place this morning, God. We're asking that something of heaven will touch earth. We're asking that people who need a touch of healing will receive healing. People who are feeling weary will be restored. People who just need a pickup, God, will just find it in the presence of God. People who have every kind of anxiety and a little bit of depression will find joy in the presence of God. We're asking God, whatever we need, we know that you're still the answer. So Holy Spirit, would you come this morning in your power and in your glory and in your might and do only what you can do in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Turn around and say hello to somebody. It says, great to see you. And let's begin to worship Jesus together.
just thank you for the gentleness and the power of your presence. And even now, God, as we just stand in your presence, I just feel that people are just being strengthened. And a, a quietness and a confidence that God gives you strength. I feel some of you are having your, your knees strengthened this morning, not, not in a physical sense, but in a spiritual sense because some of the stuff that you're carrying right now. Feel the weight of what you're carrying is too much. But those weak and feeble knees, God is strengthening right now. Because His Word says, God will not give you anything that you cannot handle. And there's nothing today that you and God can't work out and can't deal with together. And He wrote the words in the Old Testament and the New Testament. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He is there with you. And so right now, you might feel it's impossible what you're facing. I just pray the strength of God over you right now. gentleness and yet the power of God is just is just incredible. Well let me give a few announcements before we just release um, our children this morning. Um, I encourage you to come along um, on Wednesday evenings. We had a great time again on Wednesday evening um, just sharing together. We didn't get through everything that we were planning to get through. Uh, we kind of got stuck on verse six, seven, I can't remember what we're on now. I think it's verse six. We only kind of got halfway through that. And it was just incredible just to sit and share and pray together uh, on Wednesday evening. Uh, next Sunday um, is our harvest special. So a few things just to be aware of. Um, can you please bring any non-perishable goods that you can? If you want to shop it this week, put an extra few things into your trolley. What we want to do is, is fill up Joseph's storehouse. Uh, we'll be in contact with school in the next couple of weeks. Hopefully we can take some, some hampers down. Sorry? Okay. Um, hopefully we can... Um, Take some hampers down again like we've done the last couple of years and just bless the community in this particular area. Uh, also, um, we will be having lunch together. Amen. So there's a list around somewhere, probably in the welcome area. Uh, if you can bring some food with you to share next week, we'll set the tables and stuff around the back uh, just to bring some food in. So there's a list there. You can uh, put your name beside it. Uh, it's on the welcome area the way in. Or there's something on that list that you want to bring something else, then please do fill that in uh, so we all can have uh, lunch together uh, next week. And also, uh, next week, uh, as you've been uh, hearing from myself and my team uh, since the AGM, um, we're looking for a new building, and so we want to be intentional about this. And so next Sunday morning will be the first ever offering that we will take that will go towards a new building or towards a rental or whatever that may be that God opens up for us. We don't know how long this will, will take for this process to happen, but we're calling it moving forward because God has some amazing plans for this house. Amen. Amen. Yes. Is, is this on? 
So let me say that again. God has some amazing plans for this house. And you get to play your part in this. And so we want to encourage you next week, beyond your tithes, um, to give a gift in. If you gift aid that, then please let us know. Um, we'll make some envelopes available to you next week. But also, if you want to give it during the week and give it in uh, online, then please do that. And just mark that moving forward, uh, our building fund, whatever that is, so we can restrict that money. And that number, that money cannot be used for anything else except that. So we can't use it for anything else in church. It's not general funds. It will be restricted funds. Uh, so please encourage you to do that next week. Who knows what will happen? Who knows what sort of building that we have? I, for me, I just don't want a church building. I want a resource center. Anybody with me? We want to be a resource to the community, community in which we live, and that covers all sorts of things. And I was talking to somebody during the week about this. I think, you know, we talk about salvation. I think we've got to talk about holistic salvation. So my body, spirit, healing, everything is all part of it. Okay, we'll do some preaching on that. I think we'll, <laughs> we'll have a look at that. So next Sunday morning, very, very, very significant for this house. So I want to encourage you, bring some food along. We'll have a slightly shorter service. That never, never works again, does it? Never, never works. And, and then we'll have some lunch together afterwards uh, next Sunday. So that's our moving forward. Um, when we get close to Christmas, what we'd like to do is create a city church choir. <laughs> So it's open to every single person in here. If you sing like an angel or an old crew, that doesn't matter. By the time it gets to heaven, it's glorious. Okay? So we want to create a choir. So if, you're, if you want to be part of that choir, we will have some practices on Thursday evenings leading up to Christmas. I have a leadership meeting tomorrow night. We're going to put all the Christmas days in, all we're going to do. So we'll let you know those things and get stuff off to the printers. Uh, but we really want to encourage you to be part of the choir. So speak to Daniel at the back. He's the one at the back and on the sound desk. Uh, so please just give your name to Daniel. And over the next few weeks, we just want to create a choir. We'll have them all along the back here and we just want to make a heavenly noise. Amen. And so we want to encourage you to be part of that. So please do uh, sign up for that. At Kintsugi Hope, we're going to look in the new year, but the forms are still at the back to fill in our well-being course that we've run the last couple of years. So please do fill in those forms. Again, if you want to be part of any team, all the forms um, are at the back. Okay, I think that's everything. So we're just going to release our children and our young people this time. Have a great time upstairs. Do what you're told. <laughs> and for the rest of us, if you've got your Bibles, go with me to Acts chapter 4. We had a very interesting night on Friday night at the prayer meeting and uh, we came along and uh, as you know we put some prayer meetings in on Friday evenings once a month uh, for the next couple of months so uh, we'll have another one in November and in December we're going to have a Christmas party um, but on Friday evening uh, we turned up here having some worship together we just sat down to unpack some of the stuff we're going to pray for. And then we heard this bang outside, and we're sat in the coffee bar area, and we weren't quite sure what it was. We weren't quite sure it was somebody trying to break in one of the cars or whatever. And so we sent Daniel out. So Daniel went out, and Daniel didn't come back. And, uh, and, and Faith's getting a little bit worried. Where's Daniel? So we sent the other Daniel out to go and find this Daniel. And, and so, so he came back a few minutes. It just reminded me all the verbs Noah was sending out of the ark, and some were coming back and some weren't. And so the second Daniel came back and said there's been an accident. Somebody got knocked off a bike just, just on the corner there. And so the prayer meeting kind of went and paused. And half of us just left. We had a doctor, we had a nurse all in the group. So we were all went out to do there and see what we can do. And uh, he was only young, maybe 1920, something like that. And the person who was driving the car, I think, was early 20s as well. And uh, so we, we did what we could there. Daniel stayed with him until he went into the hospital, uh, into the ambulance. And uh, so we just came back and we just prayed. And we just prayed and we prayed. And we, and, we, and we don't know what the results of that is. But suddenly everybody in the corner was there. But the church was there. And we was really encouraged. We just got to pray. And, you know, as, as things were going on. And, and we came in and we prayed. And we prayed for the driver also. That's really important. You know, I don't know if you've ever just been in a near miss. I don't know about you, but my heart misses a beat, thinking, what, what if? 
and uh, this, this young driver because the anxiety of getting in behind the wheel again and all sorts of stuff. So we prayed for that and we prayed that the ambulance would arrive really, really quickly. And as soon as I finished the prayer, uh, somebody came in and says the ambulance is there. And uh, so they arrived really quickly as well. But it really gave us an opportunity to pray, thinking, yeah, God, the church is just more than getting together just, just to say some nice prayers. We can make an impact yeah. of what's going on. I want to share one story with you. I'm not going to mention his name. Um, what is about the gym? Yes, I do go to the gym. Me and Chica, we go to the same gym, don't we? He has the muscles, I use the vending machine. And um, opportunity, um, there's another guy who goes along the gym, and he's a Christian as well, because you know he's a Christian, because on the back of his talks all the time is, you got to meet Jesus, and there's crosses, and there's all sorts of stuff. And um, I seen this one day on the back of his t-shirt, I went across and said, oh, do you go to church? And yeah, they, they, they go to Kingsgate, uh, him and his wife, they go to the gym. And I started talking to him, and he's an evangelist by trade. And um, evangelists are not very quiet. They're, they're, they're quite loud, and he's not a, he's not a quiet guy. You've, you've met him. I bumped into, we bumped him in Aldi, didn't we? You walked away and left me with him. And, um, and he was there, and he was just, was just talking away to him. So I, I saw him, um, I was on the treadmill, and, um, and then he came, and he got on the treadmill beside me. And uh, we just have this conversation, and we're just talking away and talking away and talking away. Of course, he's not quiet. So we were talking about what's going on uh, with the wars. We're in Israel. We're talking about you know end times. He's quoting all the scripture to me, and you can imagine the gym is, is quite quiet. There's radio really going on in the background, but he talks like this. And he talks, you know, that and Jesus is coming back real soon. We're on this treadmill, and everybody's kind of like... <laughs> <laughs> and he's just sharing, sharing for twenty minutes. I had just put on the screen just to watch something on YouTube, got my ears in, and for 20 minutes I couldn't get to watch what was on screen, and he was just talking, and we're talking about scripture, and we're talking about God, and we're talking about second coming, and all sorts of stuff. 20 minutes is up, and so off they come to dread, and I'm like, oh my God, I'm up here now. And, um, and um, so the next thing, this other guy, who I've got to know over the last 12 months, got on the treadmill beside him. And I'm thinking, oh, oh no, and I could see, because I was at the end of the gym, and I could see he was just talking away to this guy, and I'm thinking, oh, yeah, you're, you're finished. <laughs> Before you leave this gym today, you're going to be a Christian. You, you, you've got no hope whatsoever. And so he was talking away, and they seemed to finish the treadmill together. And so I'm at the end of the gym, and so off this guy gets, and he waves me down. <laughs> in the, the gym, they know what I do. And so we're coming down, and this guy that um, I've known for the last 12 months or so has, a, has an MS for 25 years, something like that. And uh, this guy says to me, well, he's had MS, so we're not going to have it anymore. We're going to pray for him. Now, we're standing in the gym right beside the water fountain, right beside where you get everything, right where the lockers are, right in front of the office. The office is here, and then the double doors are there where people come in and out. And we're standing, so we're going to pray. So, well, let's go into the office. So, I mean, this is not our office. This is the office to the staff. So we open the door, put the light on, and we're in the office. And we're standing there, and he's holding his hand. And I said, are you okay with this? Are you okay for us to pray with you? And he says, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he doesn't have an understanding of God. And he um, says, you okay if, if we kind of pray with you and stuff? He says, yeah, I'll try anything, he says. Mm -hmm. He said, okay, so <laughs> and we're doing that. And then one of the staff members come into the office and says, well, what are you doing in the office? We know we're just having a quick chat with this guy, and uh, she says, okay, so she lifted her bags and said, I'm going for a class now, the office is all yours. So that was it. And uh, so um, I'm holding one of his hands, and this other guy's holding the other hand, and we just started praying for his MS. And this guy was praying and praying again, he's not quiet, he's not quiet. I could see him standing here and the door was there, and I could see people, I was kind of an angle, I could see people coming to fill up their water fountain, looking in, what's going on, what's going on, and oh, I should close that door, I should close that door. And then, um, and we just share it. And then this guy finished the says, Okay, brother Phil, your turn. So I did. Good. So I just prayed over him. I prayed that the love of God, I says, God, thank you for the friendship I've got with him. And I pray, God, would you heal him just because you love him? Yeah. And then we prayed and we prayed. And uh, we finished the conversation. And this guy began to talk a little bit more. And he says, You know what? We're going to do one more thing. We're going to pray the prayer of repentance now. In the middle, you know the gym, don't you? You're just in that little office. And so we did. And so I repeated the repair back as, as well as the other guy was doing it, so the guy wasn't set up on his own. And he prayed the prayer of repentance 
right in the middle of the gym. 15 years he's been going to this gym. And then he meets two crazy people. Two crazy people. And I was thinking, this was, this was on Thursday. Thursday just gone. And I'm thinking on Friday, is he going to talk to me? Is he going to stay away from me? So when I turned up to the gym on, on Friday morning, I went on to the treadmill, and um, he was on the, the stomach thing, and I thought, oh, he's, he's not seen me, or he's deliberately not looking to see me. And then after that, he came down and got on the treadmill beside me, and we started having another conversation. I don't know where he stands before God. I don't know if he really meant that prayer, but what I do know, he prayed it. What I do know, and I've invited him to church, my next point of call is I'm going to invite him out for breakfast, I'm going to take him for breakfast somewhere, and so if you have any questions, please come and ask. Church, we do that because we love God. We do that because God loves us. And we do that because we have the Holy Spirit living within us. It's my, not my job to save him. It's my job to tell him. It's my job to pray with him. But what an opportunity. Right in the middle of the gym. Acts chapter 4. I want to talk about um, the Holy Spirit again today. I, I love being on the Holy Spirit because as a preacher, you don't kind of know what's going to happen next. And that's what we like. And as Pentecostals, we love the Spirit of God, don't we? So those verses of scripture, I know it really drilled into us when we were at Bible college. You got Acts 4, Acts 8, Acts 10, Acts 11, Acts 19. All the times when you've got those verses of scripture where people are baptized in the Holy Spirit, praying, baptized, praying, but not baptized in water, baptized in the Holy Spirit. Speaking in tongues, prophesying the gifts of the Spirit that begin to move. And I want to pick up some of this stuff in, in Acts chapter 4. And if you've been in church any length of time, hopefully you've had lots of teaching on the Holy Spirit. Please say yes to that question. We need the Holy Spirit in our lives, big time. Let me ask you a question. This is where you get to play a part now. And many people have been baptized in the Holy Spirit. Okay, there's a few now. Okay. We need the baptism of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Let me ask another question. How many people would say they've got at least one gift of the Spirit? Okay. If I offered you a free gift this morning, would you take it? Even a little pink bow on it? That's just for the guys. We, we take it, yet the Scripture tells us to eagerly desire the gifts of God. And the gifts are not for us to look good. The gifts are us for evangelism. They're for encouragement. They're established churches, there's three E's, to have the gifts of the Spirit in our lives. So Acts chapter 4, I'm not going to read all the verses, but we'll pick out some of these uh, verses that help us a little bit. So verse 1, the priest and the captain of the temple guard, the Sadducees come up to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. They were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching uh, the people and proclaiming in, in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. So they seized Peter and John, and because it was evening, they put them in jail until the next day. But many who heard the message believed. Oh, come on, church. Many who heard the message believed. How did they hear the message? Who tells them? The church. They won't know the message unless the church share the message. And the number of men grew to about... 5,000. Church growth just by two men sharing the word of God. The next day the rulers, elders, and teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Um, Annas, uh, the high priest, was there as well as Cacaphius, John, Alexander, and the other men of the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them began to question them, by what power or what name do you do this? Now we've been singing about a beautiful name this morning. That lovely name, Jesus. that incredible, powerful name Jesus. of Jesus. There's no other name by which man can be saved at the name of Jesus. every knee shall bow. And so they're asking what's going on. They're asking Peter and John, what is it you're doing? Whose power are you speaking about? Whose name are you speaking this in? And here in verse 8, then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit, 
spirit said to them, rulers and elders of the people, you are being heavy. You are called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a cripple and have asked how he was healed. Then know this, that all the people of Israel, it is in the name of Jesus of Nazareth whom you crucified. Now what a really, really strong statement. Yes. You're just accusing people of killing somebody. Yeah? Whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, and this man stands before you healed. He is the stone the builders rejected who has become the capstone. Verse 13, then they saw the courage of Peter and John. Where did he get the courage from? It's the Holy Spirit. When you begin to understand all those verses, if you don't have time to look at them, you know, when you understand that you receive the Holy Spirit, you receive power to witness. The reason I will stand in the middle of a gym and pray for somebody who's sick and, and, and pray the prayer of repentance with somebody, I don't care what everybody else thinks. Good. I'm surprised they let me back in the gym. <laughs> the next day, one of the other staff members came and says, oh, I see they're getting their money's worth out of you in here. Because they know the job that I do. It says, absolutely. Why should somebody have to carry pain for 25 years? You carried your back ache for 40 years. Now you don't have it. It doesn't matter the length of time you carry the illness or the pain. God can still hear you right here, right now in this place. But you've got to have the courage to do it. Have you got some courage? Yes. Now, because I'm, you know when you answer a question like that to me? <laughs> you're going to have to prove it. <laughs> I wish I could turn that camera on. <laughs> Here, note in Acts chapter 4 that the disciples received boldness through the Spirit of God and continued to preach the gospel and it even gave guidance to the Sanhedrin, the religious leaders of the day. They're giving them instruction of what is going on. Leaders that we have today in our world need the guidance of the Holy Spirit. What I want to do at the end, and hopefully we've got time, is when we finish, we turn the camera off. I want to, we did this on Friday night. I want us to stand as a church and pray for what's happening in Israel and Gaza and Iran and those particular places. We want to pray over the churches. We want to pray over the Christians. We want to pray over those, those people who have lost loved ones. We have a responsibility to pray. Yeah. And so we're going to do that at the end. The believers here, you see, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you can't help but witness about God. <laughs> you, can't, you can't help it. Listen, your shyness goes. I was the most shyest person you could ever meet. Is that true? Yeah. <laughs> my outlaws, or my in-laws, knew me, and, and when I first met Helen at Bible College, three years of Bible College went through, and never once put my hand up to ask a question because I was too shy. I still carry shyness. God's working with me on that. But something happens when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit and you receive boldness. That it doesn't matter what sickness or illness you're facing. It doesn't matter what, how long they've carried it for. It doesn't matter if they're a non-Christian. When there's courage, when the Spirit of God comes upon you, you have to talk about Him. Come on. We've been talking about this in the Wednesday nights, a couple of our conversations, that we all have a job to evangelize. Amen. We can't just leave it to the evangelist. Every single one of us are supposed to share Jesus. And here Peter and John are doing exactly that. And what job was Peter before? He's just a fisherman. He probably smelled a little. And he's come off the boats and he's he spent a lot of time just on the, on the Sea of Galilee. He's just there all that time. But now he's around and he's speaking to the religious leaders of the day now because of the courage. And you read in scripture, well, these old school men, how dare they talk to us? They're talking with a wisdom and a courage that they've not learned. You see, when you receive the gifts of the Spirit and you begin to prophesy and you begin to give words of knowledge, it's not stuff that you've learned. It's coming from an all-knowing Spirit of God who gives you the revelation to speak at that particular time. 
and it doesn't matter what education you had. I never read a book cover to cover about the Bible college, and I didn't read Bible college since I was 21. Apart from football manuals, I probably read them. <laughs> but not one book. It doesn't matter if you're unschooled or uneducated. It doesn't matter what, what your first language is. It doesn't matter what nation you come from. Something changes when the Spirit of God grabs a hold of you. Courage and boldness just become the norm. <laughs> the Holy Spirit will help you and give you power in the face of opposition. So what are you facing right now? I, I felt just at the end of the worship... They just want to pray over feeble knees in, in the sense of what you were carrying spiritually over your lives. And I don't know, and I didn't ask for a response. I don't know who, who that was for. Maybe it's for a few people. But sometimes we face stuff and it, it's, it's not good. Sometimes we face stuff and it's very difficult. And we don't have the answer to those things. So I'm going to ask you now, if you're facing something... That's beyond your intellect, beyond your, your thinking, beyond your, your natural powers and abilities. Would you stand your feet for me? Wow. Scripture says this, I can do all things through Christ. Hang on a second. Through Christ. It doesn't say I can do all things by myself. I can do all things through Christ who gives me. Now, where's all those that has courage? Because I know who said they had courage. <laughs> I told you. Do you have boldness in the spirit? And what I want to do here, and I've been thinking about this over the last few days when I, when I was going through this for uh, this morning. Like, shall I do it? Shall I not? I've had this battle that's going on in my head, and so I'm just going to do it. Is that all right? You don't know what I'm going to do yet, but you just agreed to something that you don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask for the bold people of the house to come and stand along the front with me, and we're going to pray over these people in tongues, in power. We're not going to ask what their circumstances are. We don't need to know that, but the Holy Spirit knows. So I'm going to ask some people to come stand this side and stand there. Now, when you come to ask to pray in tongues, I don't want you to be quiet. The Holy Spirit, yes, there's a quiet side to him, but there's a boldness. There's a fire. There's, there's a power. So where's all those that have the courage that will come and stand beside me on my right and on my left? I will lift their voice and speak in other tongues and other languages. Is there anybody out there that will come and stand with me now? You guys that are standing, just lift your, lift your hands in the presence of God. You know what you're facing right now. And we want to pray for you this morning because you're part of our family. And we want you to know this morning that you're not standing on your own. And you can choose to share with some friends in this place or some family members some stuff that you're going through. That's totally up to you. But you need to know this morning you're not on your own. We're not asking for every detail. We're not asking you to send us an email. We're not asking you to come and have coffee with us. But if you need to do that, then we will help you with that. But what we're asking this morning is you raise your hands in faith. The church is going to pray in boldness. Amen? Now you guys that come forward, I want you to lift your voices. The job of you speaking in tongues is to be louder than the person beside you. Listen, church, there's sometimes a time to be quiet, but sometimes it's a time for warfare. Sometimes it's a time to lift our voices in power and authority and realize that what we've truly, truly been given. Right, come on, begin the prayer talks. Come on, lift your voice. You guys are sat down out there. You just begin to pray. You begin to pray. Lift your hands towards the people that are standing this morning who need a breakthrough, that they're facing something that they can't do by themselves. They can't do by themselves. And we pray right now in the spirit that you will strengthen them. You will impact them. You will power them in the spirit. God, we pray in Jesus' name. Come on, church. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Yeah, you should go
Because if I'm asking this question this morning about drawing closer, yes, I want to draw closer, then, you know, then if, if that's kind of you, then you should be closer to God this Sunday than you were last Sunday. And then the Sunday before that. So today, on the 15th of October, 2023, should be the closest day you've ever been to God in your life. Think about it. It should be, shouldn't it? It should be. You see, the Holy Spirit wants to minister through you. But how do we accomplish those things unless we're constantly being filled by the presence of God in our lives? When I think about the life of Jesus when he walked on the earth, uh, we know that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, so we know we have the Son of God wrapped in flesh. But remember, he set aside those characteristics, didn't he, in Philippians 2. He said he humbled himself. So he set all those things. So equality with God was something that he led aside in order to become a man just like you and me. So when Jesus walked on the earth, in Matthew chapter 3, when he was brought by John the Baptist, and he had to be um, baptized by John the Baptist, otherwise you and I could not have righteousness. Okay. He was baptized in water to fulfill all righteousness so you and I can stand right before him. So then he's brought up out of the water. We've got Jesus. And then the voice from heaven speaks and the heavenly father speaks and the Holy Spirit descends like a dove. So you have the whole trinity in Matthew chapter 3. So Jesus is filled with the Spirit and then straight away he was led by the Spirit of God into the desert. So we're going to look at those three temptations. Not next week we'll look at harvest but the next few weeks that I'm speaking. He's led by the Spirit of God. Now remember, he's God wrapped in flesh. 
He's the same as you and I, but he's baptized in the Holy Spirit just like you and I. So how Jesus lived his life on earth is an example to you and I, you and I, how we live our lives. The things that he did is an example for you and I of how to do them. You see, I would not ask you to go and be an evangelist and share the gospel of Jesus Christ if I wouldn't do it myself. I wouldn't ask you to come tidy up and help clean the toilets or do what else unless I'm prepared to do that myself and we've done it for years. Jesus would not ask us to do something that he's not done himself. So he faces Satan head on in the desert. He faces the religious leaders of the day. But then he begins to heal the sick and blind eyes begin to get open and deaf ears begin to hear. The lame begin to walk and even the dead arise. And well, I think it says somewhere in there, well, that's just the kingdom of God the way it's supposed to be. And the power of the spirit of God in our lives. So did Jesus then move more in the spirit of God than you and I? It's a fair question to ask, I think. I ask that for myself. Well, I look at the life of Jesus and I look at my life and I think he's done a few more miracles than I have. Yeah. I think he's led a few more people into the kingdom of God than I have. But, but he, he's my goal. He's the person that I want to be like. He's, he, his lifestyle is one that, that I want my lifestyle to be like. But I can only do that through the power of the Spirit of God. Jesus didn't start his ministry until what? Until he was baptized in water and baptized in the Holy Spirit. We need them both in our lives. If you're not baptized in water, there's some forms out there. Please fill them in. We'll take you there. We will dump you good stuff. You see, the, the prayer of Ephesians 1, when Paul is praying, it's that you and I would have the spirit of wisdom and revelation to know him better. The reason that we're doing this whole series on the preeminence of Christ is because in, in the years that I'm doing this, the 20 odd years I'm doing this, sometimes as Christians we don't realize the God that we serve. We don't realize the God that he is. We don't realize the power and the majesty that he is, the holiness that he carries. All that stuff, sometimes we don't have a full understanding. You could be in church 20, 30 years and still not have a full understanding of who he is. We can put all the theologians together, all our minds together, and we can put all the information we have know about God, and we can write it all down, and we still won't scratch the surface of who he truly is. But we have a responsibility. So we need the, the Spirit of God to help us have that wisdom and revelation to know him better. That the eyes of our heart might be open, that we have those spiritual eyes open to receive and see the revelations of God. When was the last time you had a revelation? I'm not talking about the book. I'm talking about the time where God said something, and suddenly the light went on, and suddenly you realized, oh, yes, I understand that. Do you realize this, God? I didn't know that about you. I didn't see that about you. We, we should be having revelations every day. And I speak for myself also. You know, when you've been preaching for 20 odd years and you constantly come across scripture and come across, there's something else. Well, I've read that, I've read that, I've read that, I've read that, I've read that. You just have us reading this morning from Psalm 23, just in the prayer room, there's reading, you know, um, he restores my soul. I, was, I had to stop there. Because sometimes there's parts of scripture that just mean more in your life than different parts of your life. Do you understand what I mean? He just, he restores my soul. The Father, would you, Holy Spirit, would you open our hearts that we begin to see you in all your glory and all your power. God, we want to begin to see not just what's in heaven, but we want to pull heaven to earth. The reason we begin to see miracles and the people getting healed over the last few months because there's no incurrency in heaven. There's no sickness. You do know that, do you? So if you've got backache and you get to heaven, you're not going to have it anymore. That the currency of heaven, we want to keep pulling to earth. There's no sickness, there's no illness in heaven. There's no sin. 
We all know people who don't know God, don't we? In your workplace, you know people who don't know God. You have friends and family who don't know God. You have neighbors who don't know God, and that's coming through our conversations on prayer meetings on Wednesday nights of our, our neighbors that we're beginning to get friendly with. Doesn't matter what background or what other religion they're from. For God so loved them. You see, you and I, we are destined to bear the manifest glory of God in our lives. You are carriers of the presence of God. So wherever you go, you're carrying the presence of God. Now remember, John talks about it, you know, he's tabernacled with us. The Holy Spirit, Jesus went up into heaven and said, the Holy Spirit, not just be with you, but be in you. So when you go to work, do you need the Holy Spirit at home? If the Holy Spirit is in you, it doesn't matter if you go to the gym, God is still with you. In your workplace, God is still with you. Your friends and families, your neighbors, God is still with you. Bring the conversation around somehow. When I'm speaking to my neighbors somehow, I managed to bend the conversation around a little bit back to my job because people are just fascinated. Because a lot of them don't know vicars. No, my kids don't like saying that. I'm not a vicar, I'm a pastor. <laughs> But a lot of people don't know. So this guy I was talking to in the gym, when, other, when this other lady was asking about something, says, well, Phil, Phil's the only vicar I know. Speak to him. <laughs> and so they're telling me about their kids getting married and one, one lady's uh, uh, daughter's getting married and having a gothic wedding. She started telling me all about it. She says, you might not like that. It's a conversation opener. People are fascinated. They want to know about God. We've just got to give them that opportunity to ask some questions or to leave some little seeds in as much as we possibly can. But because we receive the boldness from the Holy Spirit and the courage to do that, shyness has got to go, church. Pick up the boldness of the Holy Spirit. It's not enough just to be filled. It's not enough just to be filled here. The Holy Spirit, you know, the Holy Spirit will be filled with the Holy Spirit. When you understand it, it's not just here. It's, it's got to overflow. Helen said to me yesterday, my three lovely plants on there, will you water them? So have the longest plants we've ever had. The, the longest we've ever had plants in our lives. We're not very good at looking after living things. So the dogs don't quite well. Water them. And next thing you know, it's, you water a little pot and it's in a little bowl. And it started coming all over the side. So making a mess, there's water everywhere. And it, it's, it's that illustration, when you put it in, not just to fill it up, for you and I, the whole, it's got to overflow, overflow. So when you're overflowing, Ruth, he's going to get some. <laughs> so he's not doing so well, you overflow and he'll get some. You just get the Holy Spirit overflowing all the time. It's part of the process of being filled with the Holy Spirit in our lives. It affects the people around you. You know what begins to happen when they overflow? Signs, miracles, wonders begin to happen. Oh, you hear? They're not listening. <laughs> Signs, miracles, and wonders begin to happen from the overflow of the Spirit of God. Jesus wasn't just full, he was overflowing. He had the boldness and the courage to lay hands on the sick and pray and command healing, not ask for it. He commanded it through the power of the Spirit of God in his life. Church, we've got to be pregnant with the things of God. Do you understand what I mean by that? God has a plan and a purpose for every single one of us in this place. You don't believe me, read your Bible. Jeremiah 29, 11. You know, I have the plans I have for you, not to harm you, but to give you hope and a future. That They're all there. They're all there. you just got to pick those things up. God, what plans have you got for me? I'm going to pick those things up, and I'm going to run with boldness, and I'm going to run with courage. I'm going to have the Holy Spirit to keep overflowing in my life, because I want to fulfill what you've got for me. Don't be a seat filler in a church. You're not called to be a seed filler. You're called to be an overflower. Is this making sense? Because I have no idea where I am in my notes. I just... You've got to have the overflow of the Spirit of God in our lives. I mean, if you're going to ascend the hill of the Lord, 
It's a clean hands and a, and a, and a pure heart. We, we've done this before. We've had the bowls out. We've come and we've washed our hands before God to, to ascend the hill. We want to be at that place. We've got to get into the Word of God that every time you read the Bible, the author is there with you. Isn't he? Yeah. Who wrote the Word of God? It's not a trick question. It's inspired by the Holy Spirit. The same Spirit that lives. So when you're reading it, Holy Spirit, would you bring me revelation? Because I want to live from the revelation of who you are, not what man thinks who you are. I don't want to live from a commentary or from a theologian, how they said, I don't want to live from the revelation of the Holy Spirit who wrote the book. I'm nearly done. I, I, I don't know where I am. Ephesians 1 3. Praise be to our God the Father, Lord Jesus, who has blessed us in heavenly realms in every spiritual blessing in Christ. Every spiritual blessing. You know, the person sat beside you is a blessing. You can tell them. And then turn to the other side, because you don't know why you turn to the other side first. We are blessed to be a blessing. The reason I want to pray for the sick is because healing is not, or sickness is not from God. God can't give what he's not got. The reason I want to pray for the sick is because I want to see them healed. And even if they don't know Jesus, I will pray for the sick even if they don't know Jesus because their healing is just a signpost to point them in the relationship with God. I want to, I just want to see this, the break out of, of more healing. We thank God what you're doing in this house. God, let's do it in the workplace, in the marketplace. All the miracles and other miracles that took place and salvation took place outside of the church in the New Testament. Really? Yes. The disciples didn't say, oh, I'm going to pray for you. Will you come to church with me? Sit down there, and we're going to pray for you. No, if they're sick, you just pray on the street. Let's just pray. Let's just pray. Let's just pray. Let's just pray. Let's take a moment to pray. Unless I know in the workplace that's really difficult, but if you can't do it in the workplace at that particular time, find some time to do it. Go at lunchtime. Go for a walk. Do whatever you've got to do. But don't miss the opportunity to share the love of Jesus to the people that surround you. Oh, gosh, look at that time. I'm going to leave a lot of this out. I think it's time we had some heavenly visitations in our lives a little bit more. What I mean by that, that we would be impacted by the power of the presence of God in our lives more than we're experiencing right now. That every day we can have an overflow of the Spirit. Every day an overflow of the Spirit of God in our lives. The Holy Spirit moving through us is so that we become His hands and His feet and His voice to work on behalf of God. You're an ambassador. You have the ministry of reconciliation. And the list goes on and on and on. We have a responsibility and the call to be a witness. You're called to heal the sick. You're called to lead people to Jesus. It's all part of our job description as a Christian. Now when you first said that prayer, you might fully understand the Bible and all the stuff that goes on. But once you became a Christian, you have this massive job description of responsibility to share your faith. To bring people into the same relationship that you've got with God, that we would bring people to that particular place. So the Holy Spirit just wants to work in us and through us to the people that's around us. Psalm 104 and verse 30 says this, When you send your spirit, they were created, and you renew the face 
of the earth. You, you might be a little bit like me, but I'm fed up with war. I'm fed up with politicalness. I'm fed up with man's plans and strategies and ideas. And yet we live in a nation that's full of that. Yet we have a God who is all powerful and all wise and all knowing and creator and eternal. And we have the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead living on us. So why can't we, the church, change the spiritual atmosphere of where we live? That was the question. <laughs> is it possible? Is it possible? So where does it start? It's got to start with me. Doesn't it? it it's got to start with the overflow of the Spirit in my life. And, and I know I've prayed this before all over some of you. Sometimes we're a little bit Maybe embarrassed is the wrong word, but maybe a little bit too shy to share our faith or to tell people that we're Christians. Or when they ask you what you were doing on Sunday, you might say, oh, we went for lunch. But actually what you did is you went to church. It's not saying you didn't go for lunch is wrong, but sometimes that opportunity, that question is their opportunity. Oh, do you know what? I, I met some of my friends and my family at church on Sunday morning. That will open a massive conversation. We just need to learn to share a little bit more. And that's where the boldness and the courage of God is coming through the Spirit of God in our lives that we can change the spiritual atmosphere. I have no problem believing when the church gets together, united together, and we pray and we pray. Like we did this morning. You might think, oh, Phil, the pastor's lost it. He's got us all speaking in tongues and all language at the front of the church. And he's asked us not to be quiet. He's asked us to be really loud when we lift on our voices. There's something wrong with the pastor. I think he's broken. <laughs> but actually no it's quite the opposite in the place where I live I'm sick, sore and tired of the enemy having his own way and I want to see something change in the heavenly realms and if we're going to pull something from heaven to earth do you remember when Daniel was praying and it took 21 days but God heard him on day one Sometimes there's got to be intercession. Sometimes there's just got to be praying and praying and praying. And praying. Sometimes there's got to be a little bit of stumping. Sometimes there's got to be a little bit of just carpet time and just lying before him. Sometimes there's got to be a little bit of the whisper. But sometimes there's got to be a little bit of the shout. Sometimes there's got to be a little bit of courage and boldness. Sometimes there's got to be an overflow of the Spirit of God. That when I meet people on the workplace, I'm going to pray for you if I get the opportunity. There's got to be more. There's got to be more. There's got to be a change. Because God believes in the church. God created the church. The church is the answer to the world. Yes. Come on, yeah. think about it. We're talking about this building. <laughs> We'd love a new building. Yeah, with all the bills and everything that come with it, and all this stress, all that sort of stuff. But we're the church. The overflow does not happen in between these four walls. The overflow happens in my life. So when I'm in the gym tomorrow, I'm hoping he comes and talks to me because I want to share some more. I want to have the opportunity to lead into Christ in a real way. Whether whatever he happened and said in that prayer, I don't know. Because I've got to be a belief in the heart, you know, that you speak out. And I don't know if that was there. But you know what? If that opportunity arises, yes. they can kick me out of the gym. I'll save some money. I'll have to join your gym and then you'll be able to kick me out of that too. But is this not church? Is this not what we're called to be? As witnesses? As people of reconciliation? Of people who would share our faith with the people that surround us? I think you've heard me say this before. If, if you were to leave one person to the Lord, and I was to leave one person to the Lord. And we all done that. And within the next year, this building's already too small. 
and the families that they bring and the kids that they bring in, that room's too small. The youth room's too small. If we would just share our faith, but sometimes we just need the boldness. We need the courage. We need the overflowing of the Spirit of God in our lives. And let us, God, just help us do that. Because sometimes, I don't know about you, but, you know, my, my kids make fun of me. When I get excited, preach, my words don't come out right. Have you noticed? <laughs> oh, you have? Yes. You're supposed to say no to that question. care because when there's something inside of the spirit of God when the energy is there and the power and the passion I really don't care what other people think people are just looking in through the door when we're praying for him what's going on what's going on they hear the name of Jesus being mentioned they hear healing being mentioned they hear salvation being mentioned they're hearing, well, oh, thank you, God. I repent of my sin. Thank you for dying on the cross. They're hearing words like that in my gym. When was the last time your workplace or your friends or your family members heard about the cross, heard about repentance? some courage, some boldness, share our faith. You want some? If you're saying, God, I, I gotta have, I gotta have the courage and the boldness. Now listen, you have the Spirit of God. Sometimes we just gotta release what's inside of you. Because, you know, when I ask the question, you baptized in the Holy Spirit, most of you put your hands up. And if you're not, well, we'll pray for you before you go. Just come and grab a hold of us. We'll put our hands on you and we'll, we'll pray for you that you, you, you baptize the Holy Spirit before you leave. But we need to release the boldness and the courage that's already in there. Let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit isn't shy. He's not timid. He's not weak. If you're saying, God, would you release the boldness and the courage inside of me? Would you stand on your feet where you are? I want to take a moment just to pray. feet, not because I'm preaching on my feet, because I want more boldness. I want more boldness to be released. I want more courage to be released. I want the gifts of the Spirit to be released when I'm praying. And I know the background of this guy that we're praying for, and I know his, his, his broken life and the stuff that's going on there. But you know what? I serve a God that can heal all of that. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Don't you? Guys, we're standing. Just lift your hands in the presence of God. Guys, and there's people around you standing. Will you just raise your hands towards them? And where's all my Holy Ghost prayers? The ones that came forward, you begin to pray in tongues. In other languages, begin to lift your voice. Don't be silent. Don't be silent. Come on. Use that boldness and courage that God has given you already. Just begin to pray. Let's begin to pray. Let's begin to pray. To these people that are standing this morning, courage is being released. It's, it's just beginning to, to come out of them because the Spirit of God is already in them. Father, we just ask right now, Father, that you would just release the boldness and the courage, Father, that's in their lives already, Father. They will not stand back. They will not take a step back whatsoever, but use every God-given opportunity to share the faith. Every God opportunity, Lord, to pray. Every God opportunity to lay hands on the sick, in Jesus' name. And we pray, God, that there will be signs and miracles and wonders that will accomplish, accomplish boldness and will come with courage. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And even if we have to stand like Peter and like John in front of the leaders of the day, we will do that because we will speak with the authority, the tired authority that they carry. In Jesus' name. 
So Father, we ask right now, Holy Spirit, release that boldness from inside them. Release that courage in Jesus' name. We thank you for the testimonies that we've been standing here. Healings and healings and healings. Father, now we want testimony of people who will stand and say, I shared the faith. I shared my testimony. And this person, and this person, and this person, and this person give their lives to Jesus just as I prayed. For your glory and for your honor, God. For your glory and for your honor. Time is short, church. We can see it in the Middle East already. Time is short. We don't know how long we've got left. But we have a serve a God who longs for more people to be in heaven than they will be in hell. Father, release boldness in the church and courage in the church as we share our faith. Let signs, miracles, and wonders be signposts that point people to Jesus. This incredible God that we love and we serve who died for us. Father, let compassion just come out of our lives this morning, God. Compassion and passion. God, we need them both. Because we know, God, there's no such thing as passionless Christianity. Let courage and boldness arise. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. We're just going to bring the service to a close there if we can turn the camera off please um, I know time is gone but I really want to